What's up guys, I'm Ari Rochelle and this is Nuggets of Truth. I always thought that it was kind of odd that Jesus was crucified between two thieves, according to Matthew 27 verse 38, since Jesus is the Lamb of God and our Passover Lamb, 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7. It was kind of weird to me because if Jesus was our Passover Lamb, then shouldn't he have been the only one crucified that day? Then one day it kind of just hit me. But before I get ahead of myself, let's lay a few foundational bricks down first. This event is recorded in all four Gospels, which is why we can know for a fact that this is an important event. So let's read Matthew's account. Matthew 27 verses 32 through 50. As they went out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall, but when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his garments among them by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there, and over his head they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left, and those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads and saying, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself. If you are the son of God, come down from the cross. So also the chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him, saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he desires him. For he said, I am the son of God. And the robbers who were crucified with also reviled him in the same way. Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lima sakbaktani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, this man is calling Elijah. And one of them at once ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine, and put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. Now I want you to notice that the two robbers who were crucified with Jesus also reviled him the same way that the others did. Let's now switch to Luke's account to get the full story. But don't forget that these two robbers or thieves reviled Jesus just as the others did. Luke 19 verses 32 through 43. Two others who were criminals were led away to be put to death with him. And when they came to the place that is called the skull, there they crucified him and the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they cast lots to divide his garments. And the people stood by watching, but the ruler scoffed at him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself. If he is the Christ of God, his chosen one, the soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, this is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged railed at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we are receiving the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said to him, Truly I say to you, Today you will be with me in paradise. At first glance, Luke's account seems to contradict Matthew's account. But I want you to notice the timing of when the thief reviled Jesus and when he rebuked the other thief. Matthew 27, 44 through 50. And the robbers who were crucified with also reviled him in the same way. Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lima sabachthani, that is my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, this man is calling Elijah. And one of them at once ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine and put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out 
again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. Now let's compare Luke's account. Luke 19, 36 through 43. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine, and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged railed at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the others rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same punishment of condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we are receiving the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said to him, Truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Did you see it? Both of the robbers or thieves reviled Jesus. Jesus was given sour wine, and then the second thief rebuked the first thief for railing at Jesus. So something changed in the thief's mind. But what? Well, as we said in the first part, the sour wine represented the old covenant growing old or obsolete and ready to vanish away. It wasn't until after this that one thief's eyes were opened and stopped reviling Jesus and instead came to his defense against the other thief. This was all the thief on the cross needed to see that Jesus was, is and always will be, the Messiah, the Christ, the chosen one of God. But why was this a sign for the thief? I believe it was because he most likely knew the prophecies of the coming Messiah. Jeremiah 31, 31 through 40 speaks of the coming new covenant. Daniel 9, 24 through 27 states that an anointed one would be cut off. Psalms 69, 21 says that this Messiah would be given sour wine to drink to quench his thirst. There are prophecies after prophecies about the Messiah and how he would die. Could it be that one of these prophecies being fulfilled could have opened the eyes of the second thief. Look at what Paul states about Jesus and the old covenant. 2 Corinthians 3, 12 through 15. Since we have such a hope, we are very bold, not like Moses who would put a veil over his face so that the Israelites might not gaze at the outcome of what was being brought to an end. But their minds were hardened for to this day when they read the old covenant, that same veil remains unlifted because only through Christ is it taken away. Yes, to this day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their hearts. Something had to have happened in the short period of time in the heart and mind of the second thief on the cross because he went from reviling Christ to defending him. Some could say that the thief changed his attitude towards Jesus because Jesus prayed for their forgiveness and didn't revile back. But if we read both Matthew's account and Luke's account side by side, we see that Jesus interceded for the crowd first and then the two robbers or thieves reviled him. This meant nothing to the thief. So could it be that the second thief recognized the sign of the sour wine? Could this have opened his eyes? Here's a little more evidence on why I believe this was a sign to the thief. As we state in many of our videos, God doesn't just do anything for no reason. Everything that God does has a purpose and a reason behind it. Let's take a look at the original Passover. Exodus chapter 12, verse 5 through 6. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male, a year old. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it until the 14th day of this month when the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill their lambs at twilight. Now this word translated here as twilight is actually three Hebrew words. And these three Hebrew words actually translate to between the evenings. This is the key to the purpose of the two thieves on the cross with Jesus and their reaction to him. The two thieves represented the two evenings. There were two thieves, one on each side of Jesus. One represented the evening in slavery, while the other represented the evening in freedom. Keep in mind that the Jews were in slavery for 400 years. They had the Passover that evening, and then by the next evening, they were walking in freedom, out of Egypt. Look at the difference between the two thieves. Both were blinded and reviled him, but after the sour wine, one's eyes were opened and the others remained veiled. In the same way, the Jews went from slavery in Egypt to free people going into the promised land. Recognizing who Jesus is and what he did on the cross will take you from the slavery of sin to the freedom and righteousness. 
Romans 6, 15 through 19 says, What then? Are we to sin because we are not under the law but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God that you, who were once slaves of sin, have become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching to which you were committed and having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I'm speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness, leading to sanctification. So these two men represented the two evenings. The evening in slavery and the evening in freedom. The first thief remained enslaved because he failed to see and understand exactly what Christ was doing on the cross for all people. The second thief's eyes were opened and he saw the times and the sacrifice of the Messiah. Therefore the veil had torn from his mind and heart and he was able to accept the Messiah and his sacrifice. This now begs the question, why two thieves? Some will say because that's just the people that were being crucified at that time and there's nothing really to it. But again, we don't believe that God does anything just because. Everything has a meaning and a purpose, including the fact that Jesus was crucified between two men, specifically two thieves. In fact, the guilty man that Jesus traded places with was also a thief. Look at what John calls Barabbas when he recounts the encounter between Pilate and the Jews. John 18, 39 through 40. But you have a custom that I should release one man for you at the Passover. So do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? They cried out again, not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. See, every year at the Passover feast, Pilate would release a prisoner for the Jews. So when Pilate found no fault in Jesus, he brought out a man who he believed the Jews would never choose to release over Jesus. Mark 15 verse 6 and Luke 23 verse 25 even call him a murderer. Here's what I'm getting at. Every one of the sinners that Jesus was crucified with or took the place of was a robber. Look at what Jesus says about robbers. John 10 verse 1. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. Those who don't enter the sheepfold by the door is a thief and a robber. What's Jesus talking about? Jesus is talking about salvation. Those who try to gain salvation other than going through the door is a thief and a robber. So how do you go through the door? Well, if you keep reading, Jesus explains it to us. I'm not going to read the full analogy though, as always, I encourage all of you to go back and read the full chapter for yourselves, but for the sake of time, we're going to skip to Jesus' explanation of the analogy, John 10 verses 7 through 11. So Jesus again said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that you may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. As we can see, Jesus is the door to salvation. Look what Peter declares in Acts chapter 4 verse 12. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. This is the importance of the first robber, Barabbas. Jesus took the place of the robber because Barabbas represented us. Because before Jesus, we were all robbers, we were all thieves. We all sought and some still seek to gain salvation without Jesus. It was even in the law for the sacrifice of a bull and goat for the sins of Israel. But look at Hebrews 10, one through three. For since the law has put a shadow of the good things to come, instead of the true form of these realities, it can never by the same sacrifices that are continually offered every year, make perfect those who draw near. Otherwise would they not have ceased 
to be offered since the worshippers, having once been cleansed, would no longer have any consciousness of sins, but in these sacrifices there is a reminder of sins every year. The blood of animals would never and could never save anyone. That's why those who ran the temple made it a den of robbers, according to Jesus in Luke 19 verse 46. That's why the man Jesus replaced was a robber, as we just read in John 18, 39 through 40. Now, if we go back to the crucifixion itself, Jesus is between two thieves, two robbers, as the Passover lamb was to be sacrificed between the two evenings, as I stated earlier. This is why they were two thieves. One thief represented those who remain in their sin and try to find a way to salvation without Jesus, while the other thief represented those who repent and seek salvation through Jesus. The first evening was slavery to the law, which gave power to sin. The second evening was freedom from the law and the road to the promised land or eternal life in Christ Jesus. Romans 3, 21 through 26 says, But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law. Although the law and the prophets bear witness to it, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and are justified by grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as appropriation by his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness because in his divine forbearance, he had passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time so that he might be just the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Galatians 4, 21 through 26. Tell me, you who desire to be under the law, do you not listen to the law? For it was written that Abraham had two sons, one by a slave woman and one by a free woman. But the son of the slave was born according to the flesh, while the son of the free woman was born through promise. Now this may be interpreted allegorically. These two women are two covenants. One from Mount Sinai bearing children for slavery. She is Hagar. Now Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia. She corresponds to the present Jerusalem, for she is in slavery with her children. But the Jerusalem above is free, and she is our mother. Galatians 3, 21 through 26. Is the law then contrary to the promise of God? Certainly not. For if a law had been given that could give life, then righteousness would indeed be by the law. But the scripture imprisoned everything under sin, so that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. Now before faith came, we were held captive under the law, imprisoned until the coming faith would be revealed. So then the law was our guardian until Christ came in order that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer under a guardian, for in Christ you are all sons of God through faith. Faith is exactly what that second thief on the cross had when he said, Remember me when you come into your kingdom. So let's just sum everything up for you guys. The two thieves on the cross represented the two evenings that the Passover was to be sacrificed between in the law. One evening was slavery, specifically slavery under the law slavery to sin because of the law. The other was freedom in Christ Jesus. The first thief remained enslaved because he failed to see who Jesus was and what he was doing for all people. But the second thief saw and understood the sign of the sour wine and that Jesus was the Messiah. The reason he recognized Jesus is because the veil was torn when he saw Jesus was given sour wine, which represented the old covenant had grown old and was ready to vanish away. The importance of them being specifically two thieves is because we without Christ are all thieves. We're all robbers because without Christ, trying to receive salvation, eternal life is impossible and will make us thieves and robbers for trying to steal that which doesn't belong to us. Jesus even took the place of the robber Barabbas who represented each and every one of us before Christ Jesus. Everyone before Christ Jesus was a thief trying to enter the sheepfold, eternal life, through another means other than him. But through Christ Jesus, we have been given the right to become sons and daughters of God Almighty. I hope this answered a few questions that you all may have had about the two thieves on the cross and what they represented and that you all enjoyed this video. And if you did enjoy it, please feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel. And until next time, God bless.